my personal top, I think it's six, under $1,000 per pair. Now, this is my list. I'll put it together based on my own subjective impressions, the overall look, the intrinsic value, and the actual performance, objectively speaking. If you disagree, that's fine. As a matter of fact, the top two on this list, I had a hard time figuring out which one to place at number one. You could just flip either one of them and I'd be happy. But with that said, let's go. Actually, before we go any further, a couple things up front, I wanna point out when I talk about on axis versus off axis, this is what I'm talking about. On axis is with the speaker pointed directly at you. Off axis is any angle away from the listening position. Also, when I say distance from the wall, what I'm talking about is the distance of the speakers back to the wall behind it. Starting off at number six, the Kef Q150. These retail for about $600 per pair, but are often found at $350 on sale per pair. They have really good linearity on axis. They have wide vertical dispersion than most speakers on this list do at about plus or minus 50 degrees thanks to their concentric design. They also have a very consistent horizontal radiation, so they don't flare in and flare back out at different frequencies. They keep that horizontal radiation profile, which gives a better sense of overall soundstage. If you have a particular instrument that has a harmonic or has a couple different tones in it, for example, maybe a piano. If that piano is supposed to be on the far right of the soundstage, but you have a speaker that wants to flare out at certain frequencies, but then narrow up at other frequencies, what you can often find is that that piano may be wide at one particular frequency, but really narrow at another particular frequency. You're gonna see some examples of speakers that do have a bit more of a flare and a narrowness to their pattern, but this particular speaker doesn't really have that, and that's a good thing. The cons, one of two things. Above about eight kilohertz, this speaker tends to sound a bit shouty or maybe electronic or grainy or sharp, depending on how you wanna use that term, but it's in the higher treble region. While the horizontal radiation is very consistent, it is also a bit narrow for my personal liking. Overall sensitivity around maybe 85 decibels or so. It's not really high. It's kind of in that sweet spot of 84 to 86 decibels for most bookshelf speakers. On axis response, pretty good until you get to the higher response up here and then we start to kick up. This is the estimated in-room response. So when I'm listening to the speakers, which I'll always do before I measure them, I'm taking notes and then I compare my listening notes to the objective data. And pretty much so far, I haven't had a case where my subjective listening notes hasn't aligned with the estimated in-room response, which you see here. So I like to rely on this a lot for my interpretation of the measurements and how to best use the speaker. In this case, the extension runs to about 50 Hertz and drops off very quickly. That is one of the reasons why I don't have this speaker higher in my list. Also, the boosted high frequency, as I said earlier, can sound sharp or electronic. And I do recommend you aim the speaker about 20 degrees off axis to bring that particular region down some. Horizontal radiation consistent at plus or minus 50 degrees. Just note, see how all this red is pretty consistent. It's not dropping down and coming back up. That's what I mean. Vertical radiation also is pretty consistent. It's not perfect. There is a flare up around 1K or so. We are less sensitive to these kind of aberrations in the vertical response region. So I don't really harp on them too much. But the main thing for me is that if you're walking around a room, you are standing up. You're not sitting at the standard listening position. And therefore you're gonna hear different sounds as you're walking around the room, mainly due to the vertical response anomalies that you'll see in other speakers further in this list. This particular speaker is less subject to that because this red pretty much stays within bounds of itself at about plus or minus 50 degrees. Number five on my list is the Polk R200. The Polk reference series R200 speakers that I'm talking about here retail for about $750 per pair. This speaker also has really good linearity, really good neutrality, and I would say it has pretty wide radiation to about five kilohertz. However, and this is where the con comes in, above about five kilohertz, the radiation starts to narrow up pretty quickly. The bass is also pretty weak and you have limited vertical dispersion. For this particular speaker, I would recommend that you aim it directly on axis. Don't point it anywhere but at the listening position. And I would also recommend maybe bringing this one closer to the walls, about maybe a foot or so. That'll help bring up the bass. Now, if you don't like it, maybe it's a little bit too boomy or a little bit too muffled in that lower mid range, then of course you could bring it back out. But my recommendation would be to try it at about a foot off the back wall. This is the CEA 2034 data set. 
And you see it's starting to roll off around 100 hertz and it starts getting a little bit more steep here. Good linearity, there is a breakup right around 1K and it could be maybe an enclosure resonance, it could be a port resonance. This is the estimated in-room response and it actually looks pretty dang good. Note the extension is about 60 hertz estimated in-room and I said putting it closer to the wall will help with that. Horizontal radiation is wide, about 70 degrees plus or minus until about 5K. So that's why I drew in this extra blue line right here to show you that it does narrow pretty quickly in the tweeter region. Vertical response is narrow at about plus or minus 20 degrees. I mean, typically you're gonna find two-way and three-way speaker designs are gonna be anywhere from about maybe plus or minus 15 degrees to plus or minus 30 degrees. However, coaxial designs like the KEF are typically gonna be wider at about plus or minus 50 and maybe a little bit above that. Number four on my list is the Klipsch RP 600M II. These retail for about $650 per pair, but are often found on sale for around $500 per pair. This speaker also has good linearity, but especially when it's towed out by about 20 degrees. It also has good bass extension. The cons for this speaker are that it can be a bit hollow in the lower mid-range, so it kind of sounds like the weight from lower male vocals and female vocals is kind of taken out. And in order to resolve that, you're gonna probably have to equalize that up a bit, placing it near a wall, not really going to help. This is the on-axis response, and you can see there's a lift in the treble, pretty constant, but if you turn it 20 degrees off, then you get this, and that lift has kind of gone down some. The estimated in-room response, I noted a couple things. There's a breakup around 13K. There's some scoop lower mid-range right here, and this is why I say if you have equalization, you could probably throw just a single parametric band of equalization at about maybe 300 hertz or so, bring it up about two decibels with a Q of about one or maybe even a half, and you'll fill that area in pretty nicely. Horizontal radiation, as I said, about 50 degrees plus or minus, but it does narrow above 5K. With this narrow radiation, I do recommend that this speaker is best used for maybe a more lively room. Same thing with the KEF. A speaker that has more narrow radiation typically can be used in a smaller room or a more lively room because you're gonna have less wall bounce, things like that, because there's less energy being sent to those walls from the speaker with narrower radiation. If you have maybe a large room or you wanna fill up a large space, multiple seats on the couch, then you're gonna to wanna to shop for a speaker that has wider radiation. And I would say anything above about 50 degrees is your starting point for that. And then vertical dispersion, again, about 20 degrees. This is kind of typical for most two-way designs. Number three, this is one of my personal favorites and I often recommend this particular speaker. It is the ELAC DBR62. These retail for about $700 per pair. And I think it's a good value and has really good performance overall. The one thing that I personally like about this is there's a bit of a bass bump around 100 Hertz, which gives it a little bit more thump, a little bit more characteristic. And I personally like that. Now purists may not like that. And so keep that in mind if you don't. This also extends the bass a little bit to where you might not have to buy a subwoofer. However, vertical positioning is pretty tight on this particular speaker and you need to be within about 10 degrees plus or minus of that tweeter line in order to get the best overall sound. I do recommend bringing these out from the walls at about two feet or so, 0.6 meters. And I'll also note that this speaker will be a good candidate for sidewall absorption, and I'll tell you why shortly. First of all, let's look at the CEA 2034 data set, and we can see that it looks pretty good. So at first glance, you probably think of the same thing I do. Well, this doesn't look that great. Well, there's a bit of a bump in the base, as I said before, and there's a bit of a diffraction element dip going on around, what is that, about like 4K or so? These aren't big, deal breakers, but they do stand out in a graph. Moving on to the estimated in-room response, these issues kind of smooth out on their own overall. So once you get reflections in the room and things like that, those diffraction elements aren't as huge of a deal. And you'll see another case where that's gonna be important as my number one speaker shortly. Uh, notice the bass bump, yeah, definitely a bit more. I mean, that's about 3 dB more estimated in-room response bass than you're gonna get from most other speakers in this listing. On axis should sound good, but you may prefer 20 to 30 degrees toe out if high frequency is too bright. So this 30 degrees in red right here, and then there's zero degrees in black, you may wanna fine tune that. I recommend 10 degrees, but you may wanna play around with 20 to 30 as well. Horizontal radiation is nice and wide at about plus or minus 70 degrees, but notice this drop right here. Well, so this drop, that's due to diffraction. And diffraction just does, to quickly summarize, for those of you who don't know, the way that works is relative to the size of the drive unit playing, so a tweeter or a midwoofer, relative to that size, longer wavelengths are going to be sent all around the speaker and then to the side and to the front. Shorter wavelengths are gonna be mostly directional, going toward the front, like high frequency stuff. 
With speakers like this, what typically happens is as you introduce the tweeter, the tweeter is going to be broader at lower frequencies. So let's say like two kilohertz to four kilohertz, and then maybe around six, seven, eight kilohertz, that tweeter starts to narrow up in intensity. Where it's wide, it's also hitting the side of the speaker baffle. And when it does that, there's a cancellation effect where it hits that speaker baffle and shoots out toward you. And in time, it's just a little bit off from that direct sound from that tweeter. So this little bit of a delay right here, over here, off the baffle edge, that creates a dip in response and then can also create a peak in response and you get a little bit of a, a comb filter, if you will. That's due to diffraction. So really the only diffraction issue that you're gonna have is pretty much pointed directly at you on axis or maybe 10, maybe 20 degrees, but much further past that, it's less and less of an issue. But since this graphic is based on the relative to pointed directly at you position, then yes, these angles have a diffraction dip. Now, one thing you can do to kind of alleviate that to some degree is you could add some sidewall absorption right through here to capture this two to four kilohertz extra energy in that upper mid range area. Doing so at about 50 to 60 degrees will help absorb that energy. And then you'll get a more neutral in room sound. You don't have to do that, but it is an example of a case where sidewall treatment can help. Limited vertical dispersion, but not as bad as some of the other ones you've seen. I said about plus or minus 20 degrees, but you know, that's kind of subjective. You could say 25 degrees and I'd be like, all right, that's cool, whatever. Number two on my list, this is where I said I had trouble. I had a lot of trouble with side in between. Is this number one or number two? But ultimately I landed at putting this particular speaker at number two. This is the Ascend Audio Sierra One V2 and they are priced at $9.98 per pair. This speaker has excellent linearity. It's not the best or most flat on axis response, but it's estimated in room response is damn near perfect. If not perfect, it is fantastic. It makes for a great overall neutral sound in most rooms. If you have, let's say a huge room where you have a lot less sidewall reflections and you're gonna hear more direct sound, then the on axis response behaving a little bit non-linearly in the lower treble might stand out to you. But I imagine if you have a typical room you're gonna be hearing most of the estimated in-room response sound. You're gonna be hearing a lot of those reflections and therefore you're gonna be hearing a very neutral sound. But there are two cons of the speaker and this is kind of why I'm not putting it at number one, okay? First off, it has very low sensitivity. So you're gonna need some good power. I would say based on my calculations, if you're sitting 10 feet away, you're listening at an average of 80 decibels and you want 12 decibels of headroom, 100 watts will suffice. But if you tend to listen louder, or you want more headroom, or you're sitting further away, you're gonna need more and more power. It also has a limited vertical response, which I'll show you in a second. My recommendation for this particular speaker is give it some room. I'd put it about two feet off the back wall. And I would also tow the speaker out maybe 20 degrees or so. You could play around with it, but I think in doing that, you're gonna find that it has a more neutral in-room response. CEA 2034 data set, black is the on-axis response, average sensitivity around 81.5. So we got a bit of a bump here at 1.5 relative to the diffraction issue we have at around 3K. It's not a, not a huge deal, it's not earth shattering, but it is a little bit of a dip going on right around there. The estimated interim response, which we have here, looks really dang good. Base extension to about 50 Hertz in room. I'd say this thing is pretty much textbook at about 30 degrees off axis. Horizontal radiation, about plus or minus 50 degrees. This might be another speaker that benefits from sidewall absorption too. Vertical contour, about plus or minus 15 degrees. Number one on my list is the Cali Audio IN8 V2. These retail for about $800 per pair. This speaker has excellent response. It has really good bass extension, and I think it's probably the best in that regard in this particular list, and it's $800 per pair. Oh, and it's a powered speaker. You don't have to go out and buy an amp. You've got everything you need for $800 a pair. There is a diffraction dip due to the tweeter and the mid-range, but this is a coaxial speaker, and when I say the tweeter to the mid-range, I mean that mid-range is the waveguide. Same thing as you saw for the KEF 150. That mid-range is a waveguide for that tweeter. But it looks like the former of that tweeter sticks out a little bit higher than the mid-range itself. So there's some kind of diffraction effect, some cancellation from that former sticking out a little bit. But otherwise, this thing is like phenomenal. I do recommend, and this pretty much goes for all coaxial speakers, 
that you tow this out by about 10 to 15 degrees. CEA 2034 data set, oh, this thing looks really good until about right here, right here. So you see this big old dip and you're thinking, whoa, that's gotta be terrible. Well, it's a dip, okay? So it, it's not gonna be offensive. You just might notice that you don't hear certain things. The fact that it's around 8K and then to 10K, it's gonna maybe take out some air. It might take a little bit of edge of sibilance off some certain vocals, but it's probably not high enough to really affect that too much. If you tow it off axis, you're gonna get something blended in a little bit more like this green line is where the listening window. So that's an average of 30 degrees left or right, plus or minus 10 degrees. And in that regard, it looks pretty dang good. This is the estimated interim response. Yeah, I said roll off sharply below about 40 to 50 Hertz. Okay, excellent through the mid range. The higher frequency, yeah, and then we have a breakup around 14K. I don't know that you're gonna hear that. Uh, I think when I reviewed the speaker, I commented that I didn't have an issue and I didn't notice it, but your mileage may vary. Horizontal radiation is about plus or minus 50. Vertical radiation, also about plus or minus 50 degrees. And that's it. That's all I got to say about that. All right. Um, if you appreciate what I'm doing here and you have any questions or comments, you can always leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, you can do so one of a few different ways. You can become a YouTube member, it's something I just started recently, or you can join me on patreon.com. Either of those will allow you to get some behind the scenes access some behind the scenes footage, and also allow you to see my videos a day early, maybe a little bit earlier than that before the rest of the public does. And it's just a good way of you know supporting what I do if that's what you would like to do. Alternatively, I have affiliate links for all of these speakers except for the Ascend. And by the way, if you're worried that I'm shilling, the number two and the number one speaker are like the lowest affiliate link payouts ever because number two, I don't have an affiliate link with Ascend. Number one, Amazon gives me like 4% if you buy a pair of their speakers or buy a pair of speakers from them. Uh, the other ones, I'll put a affiliate link for Crutchfield if you're interested in purchase any of those. And again, that helps me out. doesn't cost you anything extra, but I'm just trying to be upfront. Like that's one of the ways that I help pay for this channel. And if you don't like affiliate links, that's fine. But if you do, that would be appreciated. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.